So, and I've got to be really careful here. I, in my show notes, I thought to myself, I need to be really careful about how I talk about elimination diet. Okay. Because I believe in it very, very strongly. Yeah. But it might be one of those points where I'm crossing a bit of a boundary between, I said I'd only talk about things that were scientifically evidenced and proven yeah. and that I was qualified in to do. When I start talking about elimination diets, I might cross over. The other thing is I said my number one rule was I can do this. Yeah. Why do I never recommend elimination diets? Because if I recommend it to people, they say, I can't do this. Yeah. This guy's an alien. I don't want to live like a monk. Yeah. So we talked about, about elimination diet. Um, yes. Better fill people in. What were we talking about? Um, so we were talking about basically eliminating a lot of different food groups because they can be, you can be sensitive to them and sure. they can produce negative outcomes. And I asked you about it because obviously I have spoken about this before, but um, I have, I get really bad spouts of acne, especially, sure. I don't know if you can see, but I, I have it really bad around my chin sure. and um, it gets really, really sore and painful. And then when I get it, I then get loads of cold sores as well. So um, sure. Yeah, I wanted to ask you about it really because I wanted to see if maybe it was a good idea for me to do the elimination diet to see yep. if there was a food group that was triggering yep. my skin condition. Yep. Um, because I have spent hundreds of pounds on skincare regimes and yep. treatments and stuff. So and do just, I, Leanne, yeah. yeah it doesn't get, it's not getting better and I'm 32, not 13, so. <laughs> yeah, so I want to be really careful with this because this is something I'm very passionate about. And if anyone knows me as I've worked with me, you know my background is in holistic medicine, natural medicine. I'm a, such a huge believer and I've done some things with people over the last 20 years. And again, I want to be a bit careful about some of those things that I say because I could say, I fixed someone and she got pregnant. Well, <laughs> it might have been the work I did or yeah. it might have been something else. Yeah. But just So an elimination diet to me uh, is something where you basically remove anything that could be an irritant. Um, Ever since I've been sort of studying natural medicine, there are a number of things that come up very frequently that cause people problems. Yeah. Wheat, refined wheat is the number one. There's a very good book called Wheat Belly, which I will actually again put in the show notes so people can read that book. Um, dairy flags yeah. incredibly frequently. Uh, you wouldn't believe it. Um, tap water. So tap water is unfortunately full of a lot of things they put into it to keep the pipes clean, yeah. which aren't particularly good for us. Um, and again, have to be careful because there's some science on this and there is some yeah. for example there's a lot of studies about estrogens in tap water okay um, there's a lot of studies about fluoride in tap water and, yeah and the dangers of fluoride okay refined sugars okay so refined sugars are another one that if you ask me we could solve a huge amount of problems yeah. just by saying to people do not eat refined sugars yeah and when you say these things and people listen and think how the hell am i supposed to eat with that it's actually a lot easier than you think yeah okay and the last one is yeast so those five things, if I work with somebody, um, those five things coming out of, what, of their diet completely yeah. is what I call the el elimination diet. Why do I never recommend it? And why do I never push it on people? Because it breaks my golden rule, which is I can do this. Yeah. If I yeah. say to the guy who was 30 stone, who I referenced, who I met in Newton Abbott 10 years ago, do the elimination diet, yeah. he just turns around and walks out of the gym. Yeah, okay? definitely. He, he's, adherence is when you're yeah. working with something, you need adherence to something and you have to be realistic about what they can adhere to. What has tended to happen with me, with people I've worked with, is I've reached a point with them where they've asked me about the elimination diet yeah. rather than me telling them to do it. Yeah. How do people get there? Back to the fluff of ask a better question. What's my purpose? What are my goals? I think I said in episode two, my aim is to get somebody to a point where their food choices are all about the things they're trying to achieve. Yeah. For example, I have a huge presentation at work tomorrow morning. I want to feel really good. So for dinner tonight, I'm going to make sure I eat steak and veg and the yeah. blueberries. When I wake up in the morning, I'll have my eggs. Yeah. So I want people to make that association between what I'm eating and how I perform yeah. and then how, how happy they are. So typically what happens to me with a lot of athletes is I'll meet them, we'll talk about training, we'll fix the training, we'll fix the recovery, we'll talk a little bit about nutrition, and I almost leave them to their own devices yeah. because I want them to come and ask me. Within about three or four months, a lot of the athletes that I've worked with, some of which have records like they've played the most minutes of football, never been injured, et cetera, et cetera, which makes me very proud, are on what I call the elimination diet. Yeah. They do not eat any wheat at all and wheat's in everything. Yeah. They do not eat any yeast. Dairy is, some, sometimes some people are good with dairy yeah. and certain types of dairy and sometimes some aren't at all. So can you eat dairy-free products? Uh, I would say it's very, very individual. Very, very individual. So for example, some people 
do terribly on processed you know, cow's milk, yeah. but they're okay with goat's milk okay. or say like the Green Life Green Top yeah. or they're okay on say rice milk and stuff like this. So I would say it is an individual thing. Yeah. The other thing with dairy is that it's one of the things you tend to find when you do take it out and you put it back in in small amounts, people tend to be okay with okay. it. And again, it's a bit of a generalization and I have to be careful because I'm definitely not qualified to sort yeah. of say that. I remember having a discussion with a dietitian. I thought about this, I think it was 2002 or three, back in my Torquay gym. And she was actually saying to me, you shouldn't be talking about these things. Um, there's no evidence to support this. She actually was, had a bit of a, uh, what's the correct phrase? She wasn't particularly happy <laughs> because um, she was advising a young girl who was, um, whose mum was a member. And she told this, this girl's diet was cereal for breakfast, sandwich for lunch, jacket potato for dinner. Yeah. And this girl was overweight. And I said to the mum, that's crazy. Like, what on earth is this about? Yeah. So this is where the sort of, um, the problem would come from. And yeah. I'd advised about more proteins and more fats. And I'd also advised her to eliminate some things. So I've got to be a little bit careful because some people will say, oh, you should never be eliminating cal um, uh, dairy. You should never be eliminating. I want to be really clear about that. I'm definitely not qualified to give that advice. This is very much a personal yeah. opinion. Based on uh, experience. Exactly, yeah. exactly. If you asked me, do I believe that everybody would be better living in a relationship? Yes, I do. Yeah. Do I believe that everyone's going to want to do it? No, I don't. What <laughs> and are the just to be clear, it's also more of a health thing rather than 100%. A, a weight loss thing. It's not like... This is not people, a weight loss yeah, thing. Yeah, it's nothing to do with weight loss, is it? It's about well, eliminating food that you, has well, a detrimental effect on... 100%. Will you lose weight doing an elimination diet? Yes, why? Because your hormones will be much better. Yeah. Your digestive system will be much better. You'll sleep much better. We haven't got into the endocrine system because that's way too geeky. <laughs> Unless you control insulin and cortisol, forget it. You could add adrenaline to that, okay? Which is why the psychology is so important. If you're a very nervous, anxious, worried person, naturally your adrenaline and your cortisol yeah. will be through the roof. You will never lose body fat like that, okay? If your insulin is mega, mega high, forget it, yeah. all right? When you follow an elimination diet, you tend to find all of those things start to come Level down for various reasons. So how do people typically do the elimination diet? They take all of those foods out and initially they're a bit like, oh my God, how am I going to eat? It's mega easy. It's <laughs> yeah. mega easy. You just, you sort of go back to basics and then you sort of rebuild from there. How do I typically encourage people to do it? I say, try to get through 28 days without ingesting any of those foods. I okay? start on Monday. Yeah. <laughs> Go 28 days. And then what you can do at that point to prove to yourself is on day 29, you can take in one of the groups again. So for example, what do people typically do? They take in wheat. Yeah. And do you know what normally happens? They feel like crap. They, some of the symptoms you normally get are a headache, stuffy nose and bloating. Yeah. And I say to them, probably wheat's not for you. And they go, ah, oh, probably wheat's not for me. And then maybe so then they, they would remove it again. Yeah. And then they maybe would wait seven days and then they would try some dairy and okay. then wait seven days and maybe try some yeast or et cetera, et cetera. That's typically how you do it. And you just see how your body reacts to it. Does that mean you can never eat those foods ever again? No, it doesn't. Does it mean that you probably have to be a bit careful about how much of those foods you eat? Yes, it does. Yeah. I try and use the analogy of a pint glass that has a tiny hole in the bottom. Yeah. And if you fill that with wheat and it stays maybe half full, you'll probably never know about it. Yeah. It's not optimum, but you won't know about okay. it. If you pour a ton in and it goes over the top, yeah. you will really know about it. So I just thought, as you'd asked me about the elimination yeah. diet, am I a huge proponent of it? Yes, 100%. Am I really qualified and stuff all that? Unless we've already said that. I probably shouldn't recommend it, but I believe in it yeah. very, very, very strongly. What are the types of things that I have fixed or that I could claim to have fixed because I've got to be careful <laughs> eczema yeah how many people's eczema have I fixed a relation diet there's someone that works at Winners 2000 who a few years ago had a lovely baby and said to me when the baby was about four weeks old my baby's got terrible terrible skin irritation yeah bright red the doctor doesn't know what to do they're going to they're give this baby some steroid cream. Well, I'm not going to mention any names of course not going to mention any steroid cream I said are you breastfeeding yeah we are How, how's your wife's diet terrible she eats a lot of sweets <laughs> okay Right, two and two equals four. Yeah. Your baby's struggling with sugar. Oh, no, it can't be that. So in this case, what I actually did was at the goodness <clears> of his heart, my naturopath said, sure, of course I'll see the guy, no problem at all. So it took about 30 seconds by the time they walked in from an naturopath to say to him, you yeah. need to change your diet. So the mum stopped eating the sugar, the baby's skin was better within two days. Simple. There you go. Okay. 
Um, and people say, oh, that's bloody rubbish. Now, you can give the baby a steroid cream or you can just take the sugar out. That's up yeah. to you. Very Eczema is very commonly dairy yeah. and wheat, okay? Um, asthma. Asthma is very, very commonly wheat and dairy. That's another one. Some of the other ones where I need to be a little bit more careful is there is now starting to be this huge connection between gut health and people's mental health because a huge yeah. amount of serotonin is produced yep. in the gut. Okay, but I've got to be a little bit careful because it's a sensitive subject. Wheat does terrible things to the gut. So I actually think the elimination diet would or may help people that have suffered with anxiety, depression. You know, I'm not saying it's going to fix everybody. Yeah. Please don't think I'm saying that. I think it'd be a really good place to start and would be to take those foods out. So they're the types of things. I actually have had two ladies who came to me. One had horrendous candida, which we, this is on my list to talk about that we're not going to yeah. get around to because it's not <laughs> one of the big rocks today. Had horrendous candida problems that she'd seen three or four people yeah, and so couldn't re- fix. W- when you say candida, you're talking... Candida is, candida is basically uh, what they call gut dysbiosis. So it's kind of like an overgrowth of like a yeast in the okay. gut. Um, it's, a, it's a very opportunistic and sometimes when people go through emotional trauma, candida can really overgrow. People think you can kill it off with nystatin or caprylic acid. It doesn't really work that way. Killing candida is easy. Repopulating the gut is far more in depth, okay? So I had a woman who'd had terrible candida problems and couldn't get pregnant. I had another woman who'd been infertile for a long, 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 long time. Both used the elimination diet, both got pregnant within a year. One was 42, okay? Did I get them? No, not saying that, not saying that. No, you definitely didn't get pregnant. (laughs) But by having really solid nutritional principles, they were able to restore or rebuild their health and their endocrine system was able to function at a point where they could get pregnant, both have babies, which Great. is exactly what they wanted. Um, I want to make sure I back this up a little bit. There's a very, very famous book called Nutrition and Physical Degeneration by Dr. Weston Price, first published in 1940. Wow. No one ever reads it because it's really, really long. I've read it about 10 times, okay? <laughs> if people, if I want to talk to people about nutrition and they haven't kind of been through that type of book, I find it difficult The book basically talks about studying populations all around the world. Yeah. People that were in the Amazon rainforest, people that were living kind of never, never met people before and were ultra healthy. The principle of the book is that when you don't have kind of Western sugars and all these bits and pieces, processed foods, processed foods, that's the whole principle of the book that people don't really have any ill health. Yeah. And when they eat, as we talked about biochemical individuality based on where they're from, yeah, they're fine. Um, he talked a lot about their jaws and about how nice their teeth were. Never used fluoride toothpaste in their life, of course, you know, you you know, hundred years ago almost. So if anybody's really interested in the principles of kind of why they should eliminate some foods, and again, they should all make their own choices, I would 100% recommend it. Um, then that would be the place I would start. A very, very good book called Nutrition and Physical Degeneration. It's in the show notes. There are some other phenomenal texts. Um, The Maker's Diet by a guy called Dr. Jordan Rubin, Patient Heal Thyself, again, by Dr. Uh, Jordan Rubin. They're two books that talk a lot about the gut connection with the brain, enteric nervous system. Um, And and as I say, my guess is over the next 20 years, we're going to see more research about maybe if we took some of these foods out, maybe people's mental health might improve a little bit. it's mad, isn't it? How do you feel about doing a board? This is the danger of hanging around with me. You're going to become a monk. Uh, Are you going to start quoting Bible verses? And- it, no, no, definitely not. <laughs> not to Johnny, you won't like that. <laughs> um, I'm a little bit nervous because I want to get it right. Sure. Um, but I'm excited to see how my health and my face and that will progress. I've also had digestive issues before. Obviously sure. we've mentioned before yep. um, that I had my blood work done yep. and that was a massive um, flag yep. that, came, that that came up. And I had spent a period of time on uh, digestive enzymes and stuff like sure. that. So I'm, um, yeah, I'm definitely, I love dairy. I eat a lot yep. of dairy. I eat and there's nothing to say that you milk. might not be able to, I mean, we, te- we, we might have tested you for yes. dairy the other day. <laughs> Not that we should talk about that, but yeah. maybe if we did and it popped pretty significantly. Yes. But you admit that you eat it frequently. Yeah, a lot. So I, might, I drink tea all, all yeah. day. So it might not be a terrible thing long term. Mm. Just like I said, when I pop for salmon, well, that's because I pretty much live off salmon yeah. or I did live off salmon and avocado. Yeah. So it might not be, you know, that dairy's a killer for you. I think it might be a really good thing for your followers and for the people yeah. that you work with to see you experience it. Definitely. You might get a few cravings, but you can still eat so many foods. Yeah. So it might not be as bad as you think. Here we go, Monday. Yeah, cool. I'll document right. it. Yeah, so, there, so there's the elimination diet. We should obviously do a bit of, 
we should do a bit of work on that.